Hey, it's some old guy coding again, and somehow I lost a whole bunch of video. So we're kind of starting from scratch here, but I've got the assembly done, so we'll talk about it. How about that? Make sure I'm centered on camera here. I don't know what happened to the. I could have sworn I was recording, but I reinitialized the memory just in case that was that was the issue there. Possibly, I don't know. So one thing new is I got a wider angle lens here. It didn't quite fit on my camera there, but I uh, printed a little ring that uh, interfaced between the two. And you've got a little bit of a wider view now of what's going on down here. <clears throat> so let's recap the assembly. So one thing I did do is I had heard or read online on the forum that uh, there was uh, some loudness with faster moves. So I'll put a picture up here of what I ordered. It's a little uh, vibration isolator that I've installed in between the uh, motor and the uh, printed part here, trying to keep down some of that noise. Being I haven't tested without it, I don't know if it actually fixes anything, but we'll give it a shot. Uh, the other thing here <coughs> is because of the spacer, uh, two kitty corner uh, Two diagonal nuts uh, screws go in, and uh, they have to be like uh, six, excuse me, six millimeter because the ten millimeters will not fit into this uh, motor here. It, it's just not threaded deep enough. So you're going to need some smaller or shorter M3s if you're going to do that. And then the other two corners are um, of the uh, vibration dampener is uh, actually threaded for an M3, so then you just come in with the opposite corners with a regular uh, M10 fits in there good. So that's the one without the switches on. And this is the one with the end switches on. I was a little confused which way to run the, the screws through on this guy. You can see I, I came in through from the outside. Initially I had it backwards, but I did um, just because I wasn't sure about the spacing out there. But I took a look through uh, the website uh, in, the, in the forum and uh, one of Ryan's photos showed these that way. So I think I'm comfortable, comfortable doing that. So we've got one of the zero switches, the other zero switches. And you know, I even soldered these up on camera and I did such a good job of the shrink wrap and everything. But that's fine. <clears throat> So there's the two stepper motors. Alright, just like that. So that's that. I haven't done anything with the other end of the wire yet until we see what the distance looks like it's going to need to be. Then the other two corners are these guys. And <clears throat> these interesting spaces here that I had no idea what they're for is for um, these little idler wheels. And they're on bearings in there, and uh, they thread uh, the screws thread through from the bottom here. Mine is sticking out a little top on there, but I don't think that's going to matter. Uh, one of the comments I also read uh, someplace, I can't remember where it was, said, uh, you know, snug them down, but don't tighten them up so much that they're interfering with the um, with with the pulleys there. And it's the same thing for this one; they just uh, mirror image. So there's one guy hiding in there, and uh, this guy loaded in from the back while that guy kind of, well, he loaded in from the back too, I guess, so no big deal. So those, all those um, idler wheels so we can deal with um, the Core XY uh, uh, belt uh, routing. So uh, just one thing, be sure that your uh, screw is, uh, that this is aligned so that the screw is going into it. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> on some of these other parts, like this one here, it's very easy to crack that piece if you're not in in the hole and you're screwing it through and it splits it. So just keep an eye out for that. So let's go back and take a look at the center piece first though. Excuse me. So here we are, just like that. 
So we've got uh, bearings there, bearings here, bearings down there, and excuse me, and bearings on either side. This little spot here is to hold the magnet, and this is some sort of a little belt clamp that looks like it should mesh right in there, and it's got room for excuse me, room for a small uh, wire tie. So let me find the image for the last part. Let's get it right side up. So that's uh, these guys here. And let me, let me, excuse me, let me get the right side here first. And I did something a little different on these and I'll tell you why here in a moment. <clears throat> so we have a pulley up here. <clears throat> and we have a pulley on the back side. And then uh, this shows the bolts coming through from this side, and then uh, pulley, spacer, pulley, and then a nut. But and it looks like uh, this, is the, this is the correct way according to the diagram. This is the mirror image here. That's the correct way while I've got the heads on this end. What happens is, I've been de designing a cabinet for this. Whoops. <coughs> And I didn't leave myself quite enough clearance over here. So this was an attempt to reduce the amount of space over there, um, just so it doesn't rub up against the side of the cabinet. Um, I ended up redesigning and moving this out a little bit so I could flip those guys back. I'm gonna wait until my final uh, inspection and decision of, of assembly before I swap those guys around. I'm actually 3D printing a case. It's gonna be a small, Zen XY. I've got uh, one uh, foot square uh, thin piece of plexiglass that we use during some of the laser experiments. It's going to be the top. And uh, actually it turns out that because uh, things I didn't plan out very properly, um, it's actually the workspace is going to be a little less than the one foot square. But that'll give me uh, spots to put some little tiles in, and I forget his name uh, on the forum group, but he has some sort of a little tile uh, kind of bordering the, uh, uh, the frame there, and I'll throw a picture up here and get his name. And uh, I think that looked great, so uh, I think I'll have an opportunity to do that uh, with the uh, spacing that uh, is going to be going on. So I think that's it. I'm anxious to. Take my try at wiring a Zen or uh, cabling a Zen XY. It looks interesting. I actually went out to Menards today and got the right sized. Uh, there was an issue if you had seen the previous video. I didn't have the two inch uh, 5 16 inch bolts, but I did go out and get those today. And uh, while I was there, <clears throat> there was this cute little, uh, you know, Black and Decker crap um, screwdriver. And you know, usually I've got that big heavy-duty one, but I really don't need a heavy-duty one for, for working right in here. Mostly what I do, if I can find it here, here. I've got a bunch of these little guys, and I don't know if this will focus on there or not, but it's a little 2.5 millimeter uh, ball head that fits in here, just like that. And, you know, when I'm sitting there turning away with the, uh, you know, uh, 15 or 16 uh, millimeter M3 and my little screwdriver here <clears throat> you know you get old you get start getting problems and my wrist start to hurt and stuff like that so I figured this is pretty good it goes fairly slow too slow I wish it would go a little faster maybe it just needs a charge and then I just uh, tighten them get them threaded in as far as I need to and then we, we tighten them gently we don't want to strip it out of course um, the interesting thing about this is it takes a micro USB charge, <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool. But this was on the discount shelf, and uh, so it was a weak moment. It was my second trip to Menards today, so. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, next time we're going to start looking at this and the design on that, and uh, hopefully get into some assembly. Thanks much.